Welcome to the Shamrock Green Room, your favorite podcast highlighting everything about SCOTA Central Catholic and Columbus Catholic Schools. Each episode, we discuss what it's like to be a Shamrock and tell stories from people who have lived their life as Shamrocks. Whether that's a current student, a teacher, an alum or supporter, we want to hear your stories on why this is such a special place in education. I'm your host, Taylor Dahl, Communications Director for Columbus Catholic Schools, and today I'm joined by one of my best friends, Angie Rusher, Shamrock alum, class of 1995, current English newspaper and yearbook teacher. Angie, thanks for taking the time out of your summer schedule to embark on this journey with us. <laughs> thanks, Taylor. Yeah, it's I'm gonna, excited to be here. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Okay, so kind of before we really get into the beginning, I, I just got to ask you this. When you walked across the stage in 1995, did you ever think you'd walk back in here as a teacher? No, I did not. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, When I left, if you had told me on that day, someday you're going to come back and teach at SCOTUS and live next door to your parents and live in Columbus and do all the things, I would have said, uh, no, thank you. <laughs> Not because it was bad. You just, you're just ready. Okay, so we'll dive in now. So where did you grow up and when did your family arrive in Columbus? Because I know you kind of grew up in a few different spots. Well, my parents are from Spalding, Nebraska. And when they, my dad was in the Air Force. So he did ROTC in Omaha. And my sister uh, was born in Omaha. And then he moved around with the Air Force a lot. So my brother was born in Oklahoma. I was born in Michigan. We lived in Alabama and Illinois. And shortly after my mom's dad passed away, he was in for seven years, I think, we moved back to Columbus. And then in trying to find out what being out of the Air Force was going to be like, we lived in Columbus, moved back to Spalding for a time, and then kind of settled in Columbus. So I would say when we moved here, when I was in second grade, that's when we moved here to stay. What was it like moving around? I, I mean, I know you're a kid and it's such, it's such a long time ago, but was it just kind of normal or was it exciting? It was normal and exciting. Like, I kind of liked to have a new room or find a new house or do the new thing. I, I, we liked that. We moved quite a bit so we were used to it um meet new people it was good so run me through your siblings in order of oldest to youngest so my oldest sister is jenny and she graduated in 1988 and then my brother matt who graduated in 1992 and then i graduated in 95 sarah graduated in 2000 and mary in 2004 when you so started st bonds in second grade who are some of your best friends from that time, and what are some of your m- memories from elementary school? So the Tooley family is real prominent in Columbus, and Jane and Joe Tooley lived two blocks from us, and they had five kids too, and so Andrea Tooley was in my class. And I have to say their family kind of took us in, showed us the ropes, got us going, and Andrea and Angie were best friends in elementary school. And we used to walk home across the tracks. We were Southsiders. We lived on 9th and 10th Street. Her family still lives on 10th Street. Her, um, well, her dad passed away this past year, but her mom still lives there. And so she was just, we were the best of friends. Did everything together. And my dad worked nights at the time. Uh, Joe Tooley coached us in basketball at, at the YMCA, but he'd always put my dad down as the assistant coach so that Andrea and I could be on the same team. So we always played that game. And I can just remember Andrea truly dribbling that ball down. She was point guard. So great. That's awesome. I always find it interesting in Columbus, you know, the town our size, we have three Catholic elementary schools. Did you have friends at Isidore's, Anthony's, or was it just kind of your own little world? Or how did that really? Well, I think that's something we do way better now. Yes. Is that kids interact all the time. They go to camps together. They do. And we did interact some, but I didn't know them very well. So coming in seventh grade, that was a whole new world. You you just met all kinds of new people. I felt like I didn't know the kids coming in from the other schools very well. I'm so glad that my girls did. They had friends at the other schools when they came to seventh grade. And not that they were bad or anything. It just took, it was a bigger adjustment. Sure. Thing. And there were more kids too. Well, yeah, you're having 40 or 50 new kids potentially coming in in seventh grade, you know, that yeah. you don't even know that are your age that live in the same town as you. It's just kind of odd. Our seventh grade class had 91 kids. Wow. And then we graduated with 78. About how many came from Bonds, would you say, roughly, remember? I wanted, We were full two tracks, so okay. I would say 40. We lost a lot of kids after, we used to lose a lot of kids after eighth grade. Go through confirmation, we lose. We don't lose as many now. Yeah. We, 
we only lose a few throughout the years, you know, mm -hmm. but we used to lose a lot at that stage. Yeah. Uh, everybody can relate to this. Favorite recess story. Can you give us one? <laughs> I don't know if it's favorite. Most memorable. Okay. We were playing dodgeball, not dodgeball, uh, kickball. And I'm going for a ball to catch it. And I'm looking over my shoulder to catch this ball. And I'm going as fast as I can. And I ran into the merry-go-round. And I, I still have a terrible nasty scar on my leg from running into the merry-go-round. Ouch. At, at recess, but... We played a lot of games at recess. So how early did you feel the impact of Catholic education? Because your dad is a Spalding Academy grad, right? Yes. Is your, I, is your mom or no? Yeah. Okay. And I went to Spalding Academy for kindergarten and first grade. Yeah. So it's kind of all that I ever knew. Sure. Really. So I don't think you really understand the impact until you're out because you're in your own little Catholic school bubble. What? How is that different? Yeah. You know? Um, did, I, Jenny, did Jenny and Matt, when, when you guys were kind of moving around... Were they in Catholic school, or do you remember? I don't remember before Spalding Academy, because okay. they went to Spalding Academy for a couple of years, and then they would have been at St. Bonds. Sure. So I, I couldn't tell you what yeah. other schools they went to. But it is kind of all you know. Yeah, it's kind of all I knew. So you don't really realize until you get to college. I would say that transition was very eye-opening for me, that the things people thought about Catholics or didn't understand about Catholicism in yeah. general, uh -huh. like I felt like I knew about all other religions and what people were up to, and I felt a little bit misunderstood going to college. I wasn't. Sure. I that was one thing that I think maybe we do a little bit better job of now. The kids feel a little bit more prepared to defend their faith. I felt like I had a good faith and I was going to keep my faith, but I I didn't feel as confident defending it. What teacher at SCOTUS made you realize? Oh, okay, this isn't. This isn't elementary school anymore. This is oh. this is a lot different. For sure, Mabel Pekarik. She was awesome and scary. You know, when you can be awesome and scary at the same time, that's the best. So she was really serious, and she could smell gum on somebody a mile away. Like you better not have gum in your mouth because she would know. You just she would know, and probably Jim Pitts. Like it was a whole new world in Jim Pitts's classroom. All the stories there. He was hilarious. He was hilarious. What's your first memory of John Peterson? I would say the first memories that stand out, he used to do an awesome, um, oh, what is it called? Like intramurals. He had an awesome oh. intramural program. And so you did intramurals even in third and fourth grade. And then you were on a team and the high school kids would coach you. And they were highly competitive. They were in Memorial Hall, and they'd coach you. And you wanted to be on one of those upperclassmen's teams, and you wanted to win the games on Sunday. So you'd practice every Saturday, and you'd have games on Sunday. And, oh, man, that's where that's where it was at. There wasn't club. I mean, maybe we played a little bit of club, but intramurals, that's where it was. And John Peterson and Scott Miller would run that. Okay. And they'd have, like, third and fourth grade, fifth and sixth grade. 7th and 8th grade or however that was. Interesting. Yeah. So what's your first memory as a high school student at SCOTUS? Was that was that a big change? You obviously said junior high. I mean, it wasn't super impactful, but uh, what's your first memory of high school? Well, I think one of the things I remember is going to the first dance, and it was cool because I got to ride with my brother. So he took me to the dance or took me home, and I'm sure he had a date. He always had a girlfriend. But I don't know how that worked out. I don't remember that part, but I remember he took me, and that was cool. He had this Camaro. Oh, my. And so getting to ride with my brother, that was cool as a senior. We actually got along pretty well that year. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, what group or activity were you most excited about joining when you got to high school? Oh, I was all about the sports. Sure. I was all about the sports. So being a part of the things that would lead up to being in John Peterson's, you know, gym eventually. But, yeah, I'd say the sports. Being a part, like, even two days is volleyball and getting to do, like, the real thing. I was all about that. So kind of leading into the, the two days. Talk <clears throat> about practice with John Peterson and Coach Miller. I know just knowing John Peterson from the short amount of time that I have, like, he said multiple times that he loves practice. He loves practice more than games. Well, I'll tell you, when I was going to be a coach in Salina, I coached volleyball for two years. Um, I came here and did a camp just to see, like, okay, how does he do the camps and what's everything? And then I asked him, I said, can I make a copy of a few of your practice schedules just to kind of see the layout or whatever? 
and he has this master binder and he brought it one day and just said, go make a copy of whatever you want. And I went to the copy machine and I opened that binder and it was like, oh, <laughs> this is, this is where it all happens. You know, um, he just had everything down to the minute. And I would say to a science of what skill you were going to do for how long. And I don't know how many drills we did in one practice, but it was a ton. Like if we scrimmaged at the end, it wasn't going to be for very long. We did every little drill. So I would say what I know most about Coach Peterson, he's such a fundamental coach and a fundamental teacher. Just a, He does a great job of breaking down each component. What about Coach Miller? Okay. I feel like he doesn't get talked about a lot, but he's a big part of that short amount of time in the 90s. For sure. Oh, no, he was so awesome. And he was the post coach, and so he was my coach. I would say he was good cop most of the time. He was very fundamental also. That's why the posts during that time learned a lot. And he'd really, he'd get the pads out, you know, and bang up against you and learn how to do the drop step and all the things. But um, he was good cop. So I know he saved me a couple times. I'll never forget, we were in a game against um, Ron Colley. And this, I was setting a pick on the baseline. This girl threw her elbow up and knocked me, like, out. Like, she hit my tooth, knocked my tooth out, split my lip. And I went down like my dad said it was like I was a boxer. I just kind of and I went down and I opened my eyes and Scott Miller's laying on the ground talking to me like right next to me. Laying on my leg, like, oh, my gosh, I'm laying on the floor. This is terrible. Now, he was a good cop. He was great. Uh, what players did you look up to as a freshman on the volleyball team? That that volleyball team, your freshman year, went 26 and two, finished second at state, lost to Norris. And they were up, I think, like 15 to nine. Oh, and lost, oh I think, 17-15, so just, uh, just a gut punch. Oh but do you, me- do you remember that freshman year, sure. kind of what sure. that team was like? And also because they were my brother's classmates. Sure. So you kind of know them a little bit better. Yeah. Jenny Stiskel, Van Cannon. So she was a middle hitter, and I was going to be a middle hitter, you know. So you always watch those people. Tammy Goblins, Tracy Wessel. Sure, I knew all those, all those girls. I would say the year before them, I knew really well, too, because Andrea Tooley, her sister – um, played for that team, and Andrea and I were. We, John used to always have people keep stats as eighth graders, so there'd be three or four people who would travel with the team and keep stats. So you really wanted to be that person, and so I re- we knew everything about them. I remember the game where Andrea is keeping stats, and she knew that Megan, her sister, had broken the assist record for the school. Wow! Because we were keeping the stats, we knew what it was. So you just knew things like that. You knew all the players that were above you. And they had coached you in intramurals. So I can name Christy Sabota. I really looked up to her. The Sabota girls, they were all awesome at sports. Talk about religion class during your time at SCOTUS. So we might you know, have some people listening who didn't go through Catholic school. I didn't go through Catholic school. So it was kind of a new introduction to me when I got here. Um, what was that like? And how much did you enjoy having Father Wayne? Okay, Father Wayne was just so great at Mass. Like, we celebrated the Mass. That's the biggest memory I have of him. And the whole day, Mass Day, there was no class. You were in the gym. Every class he had, you were setting up for Mass because we always had it in the gym. We never had it at St. Bonds. Always in the gym. And you celebrated Mass. It was a big deal. And I, I love that, that that's how, you know, and we celebrate Mass now. Father Wayne, it was a whole day affair. So I remember on those days, everybody kind of wandered around a little bit in religion class because you were helping Father Wayne set up for Mass. Um, he was great. I can see him right now with his hand on his head saying, fellas, come on, fellas. Yeah, it was good. Uh, what were some of your favorite memories before your senior year? There's so many sports related things. I can remember in eighth grade being at district, um, volleyball and cheering for that team to make it to state against Hardington CC. I'm pretty sure that was eighth grade. The battles at districts where you had to beat a team like, and then that team didn't get to go. So one example of that is my junior year, we battled Skyler and did not make it to state. And at the end of the state tournament, we were ranked second in the state. In basketball? And didn't go to state. Wow. So that's why they do things differently now, which is way better. Sure. So those district matchups yeah. weren't what they were when we were those games were the whole place be so packed i mean i know we've had some big games yeah i just well it was just a different time too with we didn't have that wild card aspect and Mm -hmm. there weren't so many 
I maybe not so many games like around the area that people could go to. And it was like John Coach Peterson. He's he's always he always talks about Cedar in that late '80s, early '90s. How it was, we knew it was going to be us or them. Like every time we're going to go play at Norfolk, and whoever goes is going to go to state, and whoever wins that is probably going to be in the state championship game. Right, and you had to battle that out. No, it's awesome and terrible all at the same yeah. time. I will say a lot of my core memories come from senior year because we had a class ahead of us who had tons of kids who went out for sports. Girls, they awesome athletes. Jody Chalaha, Amy Coolin, Tiffany Bott. All those girls played sports all together. And so I, in volleyball, I didn't start till my senior year because you're behind all those, you know. And so we weren't supposed to be any good. I mean, we were all brand sure. new. Sure, yeah. We were all really young. We started two sophomores. That's kind of the lead, and I was going to, like, people said, and Coach Peterson said that same thing. He's told me that. He's like, yeah, that team was not supposed to be. And then you start 25-0. and 0. We had the Shamrock Open that year, and GICC came to that tournament. One of the dads was like, looks like you've got a nice little team there, to my dad and I in the hallway. Oh, that just grind my gears so bad. And we started out that it was one-to-one for 20 minutes because it's a side-out game. Yeah. So that game can go forever. Yep. One-to-one for 20 minutes. And that game was three-set battle of sweat, I'll just say. It was mm-hmm. so hot in there because it's, you know, Labor Day weekend. Yeah, no air conditioning. Oh, my gosh, so hot. And two and a half hours, and we beat them. And they had, I think, Coach Peterson could tell you, Four or five girls go D1 from Yeah, I team. believe. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that that was the team that had all the kids go D1. Yeah, Val Week is one that I remember. She was a middle hitter, and she would jump up, and you would just pray for the best. You know, stick your arms out, and yeah. she was just such a beast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's very scary. Yeah, we had no business beating them. You're playing GICC twice. Skyler, when Skyler was really on a tear for girls' sports. Uh, Central City, Elkhorn. Ron Colley, you know, a lot of bigger schools, and you guys take care of them all, and then you get to state, you kind of blow by Imperial, Auburn, and then you get matched up with GICC again and lose a tough one. That had been tough. It was tough. The second time we played them, going in, the buzz was that what a fluke that SCOTUS beat GICC. There's no way they're going to let that happen again. We're at Grand Island Northwest Tournament, and it's the first set. I'll never forget. I've never been so nervous in my whole life. Go back to the serving line. We're down 9 to 14, going to 15. And I served, and we win that set. I serve us out, not because I got all laces or something, but we just kept sticking with sure. it. And we beat them that set 16 14, and then we beat them in two sets that game. Wow. I don't know how we did that either. That I mean, I think our young, young eyes and experience at state played a huge part in that the reason john peterson's able to do that isn't because of his top three players it's because of the fundamentals he's taught to the bottom three players the four five six players know all the fundamentals yeah he could do all the skills better than the other teams four fifth and six players if you can get those players to start only as a senior and make a difference on that team and get kills and be behind you know following and getting kids to stick it out you know, through that too. Yeah. That's why, because the fundamentals, it's it's just key. Who was the one girl throughout high school who you knew it was always going to be tough to play against? Holly Hilger Thompson, who now works in our office. <laughs> you know. Yep. Um, oh, battle, 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 especially in basketball, especially in basketball, and she did tear her ACL, um, so she, hers got cut a little bit short. But it was always a battle. She was Lakeview, okay. right? Yeah, Lakeview. Okay. At Lakeview. Um, Brandy Truffles, I haven't seen her since high school. She was at Skyler. Awesome athlete. I think she went somewhere to throw, maybe in track. So basketball, your senior year, you kind of met the same fate as volleyball. Great se- great regular season. You get the state tournament, win the first two games, and then you get matched up with Adam Central. Shauna Griner gets her nose busted open two minutes in. Gosh. And you don't want to like say that that was the cause of it, obviously, because Christy came in and Christy was great. Um, but that had to just kind of throw things off a little bit. I mean, you see one of your friends get their face caved in a little bit where she was out to the point where I don't think she came back or she came back really, really late. We weren't very deep 
Yeah. That was the biggest thing. We were all used to playing the whole game. Yeah. We had to play the whole game. I mean, Christy came in, maybe a few guards came in and out, but I played the whole game from day one because we just didn't, we didn't have posts. I mean, eventually I think Kim Rickard started at the end, but I don't think she started at the beginning. Mm -hmm. She was a freshman. And so we just were not very deep. So you can't lose anybody yeah. to any injury, let alone Shauna Griner, the only one who can really score from the outside, which scoring, it was not our strong suit. It yeah. was defense. So... Yeah, that really that really hurt us and took the wind out of our sails. And then she came in. I don't think she would have come back in today. There's so many concussion protocols. Oh, for sure. She w she was concussed. I'm sure she was concussed. Yeah. <laughs> there just isn't the protocol that there is no. now. Yeah, and that was a great game. They were really hardworking girls, too. Sure. That was a great game. And we held them to 36 points, I think, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I think that. it was 36-32 or 36-30. So. Speaking of Coach Peterson, what – I guess what in general, what does he mean to you? And why do you think he's had such an impact on this place? And I mean, really throughout four decades of students. He's just such an inspiration of professionalism. And I have, I've seen that since third grade. Yeah. And then being able to work with him and it's the same. Like he's so professional and so great. Yeah. Every time he comes in. He's just such a joy to talk to. And I feel like anytime I share anything about him on social media, it just lights up because he just meant so much to so many right. people. Like, it's awesome. He could get the best out of kids, like every kid, not just the top athlete. Yeah. Like I said, that's not how you but, win championships. You win championships with a team yeah. and teaching that and getting the best out of every player. Do you do you remember your graduation day or any special moments from that? I know you kind of talked on it, like when you walked across the stage, you're like, I'm not coming back to this place. It used to be that state track was the day before graduation. So we were all sunburned and hot and you, and then on graduation day, you would, everybody had their party. Like now you, I have parties to go to from April Weeks. 29th to May to June 1st. I had one this year, Sure, but no, everybody had it on the same day. And so I do remember that because there's an excitement. And then afterwards the class would meet up somewhere or whatever, but you didn't go to each other's parties. That wasn't really a thing. Um, so there was a lot of excitement there. It was really hot, no air conditioning. So it was sweaty, have yeah. a full mass. It was longer than it is now. So I remember that. Um, I was just looking at a lot of pictures from that. My good friends, like Denise Liva. So we recreated some of those pictures this past year. So really fond memories. And I feel bad saying that, no, I was not going to come back. And then here I am. But, you know, you're just ready for a change in your identity. Yeah. At that time. What made you choose Hastings College? And what, what did you uh, major in? I majored in K-12 PE. I just wasn't really sure, and I loved the coaching aspect of that at the time. And so that's why I started with, I loved to read. I always read. I was always a reader. I love books more than anything else. So when I went to Hastings College, I chose it because of Rick Squires, awesome recruiter, to play volleyball. And then once I was there, I got into my English classes, and I had a professor say, have you thought about being an English teacher or adding that? And I hadn't thought about that. And I did love it. And so then I switched to English, and that's kind of been my passion ever since. You met your husband, Brett, at Hastings College. Yes. What year was that? I met him freshman year. We kind of ran in the same circles a little bit. And if you're early for volleyball, you kind of meet all the football players because they're early too. And it's not that big of a school. So you kind of meet them all then. We didn't start dating till sophomore year in November. So you start dating sophomore year. Did you know like right away? You're like, eh, I think I, think I could spend the rest of my life with this guy. Yeah, when we, we were apart that summer because he farmed in Ray, Colorado, and that was really good money. And I worked at the YMCA in Hastings that summer. And then he came, when he got back, then he proposed because we didn't want another summer apart. Sure. So then you got married in college. Yeah. You had one more year? Yes. Okay. We actually had two more years because we both double majored for education and had to do student teaching. Oh, okay. So we did the five-year plan, so we were married for two years. And we moved to Kansas City. Um, our 
extra year for student teaching because we didn't think we'd both get jobs in the same school in Hastings because the turno- there just wasn't that much turnover. Sure. And so we lived in Kansas City, and that was awesome. So that was your first stop after Hastings. Hastings. So you went to student, Kansas City. Yeah, we student taught in Kansas City. How long were you there? Um, just that semester. So the six months or whatever from December, well, actually to August, we worked in Kansas City that summer. But that spring, we went to job fair. And he actually got offered a job in Salina first as a business teacher and football coach. And then I interviewed with them. They were actually offering me a full-time sub position because they didn't have an English position. But then by May, they had an English position. So then I took an English position there. And we taught there for four years together. So what was it like moving to Salina? That was great. We made some of the best of friends. They had lots of turnover that year. So there were like 16 or 17 first-year teachers the year we were first-year teachers. And we just became the best of friends with that group. And through sports and coaching and everything, some of the best friends we still have. What were, what were class sizes like-ish, what would you have to say? Like, like 300. Okay. I'd say it's similar to Columbus High. And what did you teach? But they had two schools like that in Salina. Sure. Mm-hmm. So for two years, I taught English. And when they wanted me to be the head volleyball coach, I took the, a PE job. Okay. And did PE and was head volleyball coach for two years. And then Brett was business and coached football? And basketball, and we both coached track. Okay. So we had Janae in June of 2003 and then did a whole year doing all that coaching and everything, and that was just too much. Us having this one-year-old and coaching five sports between the two of us. Yeah, that would have been so, hard. And not five hours from his parents and three hours from mine. So we needed to do something different. But overall, Salina, I know you've talked about it, just a really good experience. Like you're glad that God put you on that path to go there. For sure. Yeah. Made great friends, learned a lot. I was really glad it would have been hard to come back to SCOTUS right away as a first year teacher. Yeah. You learn so much those first few years about the way you're going to do things and you build confidence. And so I'm glad to have had that experience before coming here. That had been pretty hard to leave. Like, even though you knew, like, this is really hard with a new baby, but it still had been pretty hard to, to leave. Right. It was hard. Yeah. It was really hard. I guess walk us through the debate of, like, I think we should go back to Columbus. Like, do you remember oh, those gosh. conversations with Brett? Or was Brett like, are you kidding me? Like, <clears throat> no. We were in a really big public school. And there's a lot of things, but a really big public school that can burn you out. If, whether it's discipline or for him, he had to do a lot of grants and do a lot of work. He loved teaching, but it was all the other stuff that really kind of wore him out. Sure. So he was ready for a change, too. And so um, we actually looked at Ray first, but even his dad was like, no, you guys need something bigger than here. That's not that's mm-hmm. not the change you're going to want. So then we decided Columbus um, and he decided to start his landscaping business. So we knew that that spring he actually came to the home show in Columbus in February to try and get jobs for the summer before we moved here. And then I didn't know what I wanted to do. I, I was kind of burnt out on teaching too. And so I actually interviewed at the 4-H office as a school enrichment coordinator. And I actually think God gave me that because I really, after leaving those great friends behind, I was going to need a person. And so he gave me Lisa Caslon at the because why else would he put me in four? I mean, 4-H, really? I had no yeah. 4-H background. <laughs> yeah. I say that I was there for two years because I did two fairs, and the fairs, like, really oh, big in sure. 4-H. Yeah. Learned a ton. Great, great people in 4-H in the 4-H world. And Lisa um, made good friends, but then there was an opening here. And so I was like, I think I'm ready to get back to what I know better. And it was an English opening, which I was ready to get back to English and not PE. I didn't love PE. I didn't. Um, love the time away coaching for my kids either. So that wasn't going to be the goal. So obviously your parents were excited for you to come back. Yeah, for sure. And so we've always been really close with them. I mean, Janae was one. Yeah. And we've, we had trouble finding daycare. That's a common theme in Columbus, finding daycare for your infants. Yes. And so my mom actually worked a different shift and watched my girls during the day when I had babies. Wow. So yeah, that's really special. For sure. So what was it like walking in the first day as a teacher? Well, I'm sure the teachers, like we have Cody and Elena, you know, coming in and hear all the teachers that taught you, yes. Brady. I yeah. mean, it's intimidating, but it was really great. Yeah. I mean, they are great teachers. That's awesome. So I was able to be mentored. I actually was kind of 
I got to be the young teacher at SCOTUS for a long time because those teachers all still taught another 10 years with me. Mm-hmm. Now we have a whole, I mean, I'm in the upper half for sure of teachers, but I was, they were all done having kids. And then there was like me. There was Onukas. They had Lindsay's a little bit older, you know, yeah. than my kids. But then Kristen Cox still had, but there's like a gap. Like those are the youngest kids. And now we have young kids sure you know with all the younger teachers so i got Mm -hmm. to be the young teacher for a long time so that was good but i learned a lot from everyone i kind of had to re-identify myself a little bit teaching english like that being my passion wasn't necessarily my passion before yeah and so i had to re-identify myself a little bit so you and jeff came in the same year together yeah it's kind of nice to have that connection yeah with him a little bit and there were several years we didn't have new teachers either so if you came in with somebody new, it was just you guys. Sure. So. Who was your first coworker friend, per se? You know, you're coming back to this place that you know that you went through school and you're kind of coming back and it's like, all right, I'm the new I'm, I'm the new kid, kind of. You know, I guess who, who was somebody you latched on to right away? I would say for sure the English department because Kelly Shod, Becky Zanardi had been teaching and then she left to be with her kids, but she came back. She's always been really close to me and she subbed for me and we always knew we knew each other i would say the english department was really big yeah and then shortly after that maybe the i would say two years then debo nuka came oh sure so the english department has always been really close what did you teach those first two years and i guess how overall would you say would you rate your first year (laughs) well i was pregnant with joanna so and there was no air conditioning that's super fun fun and i knew i was preparing for a sub in classes i'd never taught before so that was it was hard it was really hard sure um thank god for bob dearman who was my long-term sub because he was able to take whatever i had and then continue it and grade it and do he was awesome he was awesome so thank god for him um it was really hard year, but good year. I taught freshman and junior English. And I also randomly had the yearbook that year. I don't even know how that yearbook ever got done. The kids must have known a lot. So one stint is yearbook that year. Okay. Was there anything you had to adjust to at SCOTUS, like not being a student and then becoming a staff member? Any like cultural changes or anything like that? I know there was a lot of teachers who were still the same, but was there anything you're like, oh, that's different than when I was here? I think I don't, I don't remember that so much as at the public school I was at, it was block scheduling. So we had like 90 minute classes and then we have 41 minute classes. So I always felt that I wasn't getting anything done. Like, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. So it took me a little while to settle into, I'm going to have them five days a week. How does that work? I think with my lesson planning, that was a big change because we only have four classes a day. That's different. Yeah. Having nine yeah, so that was, I would say, the biggest change for me. What year did you start getting involved with the yearbook and newspaper? And it, is that something you wanted to take on? So they had been handing newspaper and yearbook to random teachers, which had happened to me. And we had a teacher leave, and I had convinced Wayne Moorfeld we have to hire a journalism teacher to do both those things so that they can be together and we don't have to keep handing these separately because if the same person does them, they can coordinate what they do and teach similar skills. We need a journalism teacher. So I really, I worked really hard and convinced him that we should do a journalism teacher and we hired one and she only stayed for two years. And then he's like, well, I just don't even know if we can do this. How, you know, what are we going to do? I can at least the year before they hadn't even published a newspaper. There was no, I'm like, I can publish a newspaper. We can, we'll get something written and done. And so it's like, we can do it. And I did kind of have a vision of how those things could work together for photography. And so I took them on together and that's been really great. What a difference that has made to have a journalism program instead of having it be separate where you can utilize the photos that you have or the quotes that you have, anything so that they can both use them so that you're not reinventing the wheel for both groups absolutely being able to double dip is just more efficient right and it's easier for the kids too oh so much easier 
What are some of your best memories in your first five years? You, you know, you say how the first four to five years, like for you at Salina, were just so important, like just mm-hmm. in your growth. Like, I guess, can you pinpoint some of those first few memories in your first five years at SCOTUS? One special memory for me is the class that I had as freshman my first year here. I also had them as juniors. I was pregnant with Joanna when they were freshmen, and I was pregnant with Jillian when they were juniors. But then after that year, I took over journalism with that class. So that class was also my first journalism kids. And so that was really special. And I trusted them, and they knew me, and I knew them really well. And so we were pretty proud of ourselves when we had seven newspapers and finished the yearbook by the end of the year. Um, So it was really special time those first four years and developing those relationships with them well with everybody yeah and then starting the journalism program so we've been talking a little bit about journalism and why does student journalism matter in high school when I was in high school I feel it personally because we had a lot of new English teachers and I loved to read and there wasn't a teacher that had me as a freshman and a junior too you know what I mean like I think journalism is important because you can see the skills our kids have and grow an excitement for that academic side and skill that they can use in the future. I mean, every job uses English and every job uses writing and layouts and people do all those jobs themselves. You don't have just a layout person anymore. You don't have, you know, people do their own newsletters. Who does that? Everyone does that. Their own newsletter. (laughs) Yeah. Raise your hand. You do that. (laughs) I just think it's really important to for student journalism for us to be able to say you're really good at this and it's fun i love newspaper class kids take newspaper because they like to write and they can say it i like to write and that's they can be excited about it and it grows ideas it's all about ideas it's all about ideas and communication yeah the skills you learn in journalism yeah life skills yeah it's just it's you know as obviously somebody who went to journalism school it's I take a passion just like you do with it because it it matters down the road whether you're going to be a reporter or you're not, and most kids don't, but it just teaches you those life skills, and it teaches you especially like how to meet a deadline is so important no matter what industry you're in, whether you're an accountant or you're a child care provider. I mean, deadlines are everywhere, and journalism, they they kind of beat that into you. And how to make a plan so you can meet that deadline. And how to communicate with people because a lot of what you do as a journalist depends on someone else giving you information. Absolutely, yeah. I think, you know, the big thing that I always tell the kids in video production is, like, you, you're doing something, and in your classes too, you're doing something pretty cool. You get to create something from an idea. Yes, and, and create your own ideas. And create your own ideas, mm-hmm. and it's something tangible. It's whether it's written on a piece of paper. It's like, I wrote that from my, you know, from my thoughts or in video production. It's like, I created this video from my storyboard, from my idea. There's not a lot of classes in coursework in high school where you can say that you get to do those things. And you get to document the history of the school that we'll keep forever. Yes. And we try to do a little bit better job of that they have in the past that when they look back at it, they're not like, I can't believe they put that in there. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so it's good. And I feel like your programs do a really good job of keeping that information relevant and just being able to go back to look at past newspapers and find information. I mean, Mr. Sheath and I had to do it the other day, and it was just like, wow, it's so nice to be able to have that online library of our history because oh, it matters yes, so much because people truly matter. care about the history of this place, and you want to be able to document it and document it in the most like positive way and just more, most detailed way that you can. Yes, and I was very blessed because when I took over, everything was digital by then, and that's new. When oh, I yeah. took over, that was new. So I've been doing it, what, 16 or 15 years? Anyway, however many years, it was all digital. And that happened just for, right before I started. Sure. Uh, when did you really start diving into what it takes to compete at the NSAA State Journalism Competition? Well, the, N- the NHSPA, which is Nebraska High School Press Association, offers what's called critiques at the end of the year where you send in your yearbook and send in your newspapers and then they critique them. And I was pretty proud of us that first year. And I sent them in for critique and they do it. There's an award of merit, like good job you turned something in, but it wasn't very good. Uh, it, it just goes up to like a superior award. And I think we got merits on both of them. And I was devastated. I did not send them in again for years after that because we had so much to do. But that's how I learned because they critique them, but they write all over them. And so you need to be doing this. I wasn't a journalism major. Sure. 
I was an English major and I'm super organized. So that's all we had to deal with or use. So then I started saying, what does everybody else's look like? How can we get better? What are people doing? I started going to conferences, getting involved, and I learned everything from the NHSPA and from the NSAA as they did the state journalism contest. And that's grown a lot over the years too. So as they've been developing that, I've been able to grow with it and see what do they think is good? What do we need to do? How can we grow and expand? And every year at the end of the year, we have a list of things. Oh, well, we're going to do this for next year. Yeah. Well, in just the short amount of time that I've been in, it's the NSA has done a really nice job of just making it better overall for the students, mm-hmm. like offering the critiques, yes. things like that. That's something that obviously being in journalism school, it's tough to get critiqued, but it's so important. Like, what can I learn from this? Yes. Even if I don't agree. Absolutely. Even if, yeah. I mean, <laughs> would we see what photography has made it to state? Yeah. We don't, we don't always agree. No, we don't. But we look at what they have and how can we do better? Yeah. So you led the Shamrocks to our first state journalism championship in 2017. What made that group special? A few students from that group were Jessica Booman, Emma Ruskamp, Matt Strecker, Tate Van Cannon. Oh, such great writers and so creative. I can remember Tate Van Cannon telling me, well, I either won it or I lost it completely with this one line that he was so proud of. And like you said, why is journal- for them to come out and just be so proud of what they did. My favorite part of state journalism, once we're finally there and it's at the competition, is when the kids come back after having competed and tell me all about it. Yeah. That's, that's my favorite part. I mean, unless we win, that's pretty fun too. But, you know, it's just hearing them talk about their experience. And I just love that so much. And that group was really great. They used to, when you got back the preliminary results, they'd rank the preliminary results. So one through 12, if your person was one, that means that they liked theirs best. So I could go in and see, like, where are we sitting with how many people we've qualified and even how many points could they get if they got that place. And so I knew going in with that first group, we could totally win this. And I had never won a state champ. You know, I don't know. How do you tell them to make them confident yes. without making them cocky? Like, yep. It's guys, a tightrope walk. I know we haven't ever done this before, but I think we could win. Like The best we've gotten before this is fourth or third. I can't remember, but we could win. But you have to do this, this, and this. You know, it just was a, that was hard. Yeah. You don't want them to go, and we're going to win, because you don't know if you're going to win. And for some of those people who are listening, they might not understand. So at state journalism, some kids compete, some kids don't. Right. Um, like in video production, our students compete everything or complete all their projects before March 1st, and we send a deadline in. It's the same thing with photography. Um, but there are some students who are able to compete in some of those events, and it's really exciting for those kids to be able to compete that day mm-hmm. just because they do so well. Yes. And at that time, there were 12 people who qualified, but only six placed. And so I would just say, you just have to place. It doesn't matter. For I mean, obviously, it matters to more points if it's yeah. higher. But if everybody can contribute with points in the top six. And so we almost always had everybody placed in the top six. But um, now they do it top eight in everybody medals. So that's different, different strategies, too. You would go on to win four more state championships. And this year, we finished runner-up. What... What does this program mean to you overall? Well, I tell the kids we don't do journalism for state championships. We do it to tell the story of our school. And I think that it's really important to do that in a great way, that we can celebrate all the great things going on in our school and document it for the future. And then, so that means the most to me. So when they're like, why can't we put this in the break? I'm like, ah, because that's not how we're going to do it. That That's... Doing that in a good way that everybody's proud of, that's the most important to me. So that means a lot. And being able to tell all these kids that what they're doing is so good, like to create, and they have great ideas, and they love to write, and they just get to use their brain in a completely different way. I just, I love that so much too. I get all kinds of kids in my room. It's not, I mean, we get kids who do mostly athletics, kids who do mostly fine arts, kids who don't do either of those things. I get all the kids in my room together and they get to uh, interact with each other. I have some crazy stories about people over the years like, did you know this person? She was like really good friends with this person in my classroom where they wouldn't have been friends otherwise. And I love that part of it. Um, That they see that success. What I like about that is everybody gets to see it and celebrate it with them. Yeah. Because otherwise, 
there aren't that many avenues for celebrating academic success. It's academic, you know, but ideas. Yeah. And so there's only at the NSA, and I don't know what else they would add if they added something. I mm-hmm. mean, we're so busy as it is, and kids are so busy. I don't know how they'd add more, but there's only three fine art, like, state competitions. Correct. And so it's great that we have that. So you just had your second daughter, Joanna, graduate from SCOTUS. How's the transition kind of been? I know she's not fully out of the house yet, but now with just Jill left in the building and at your house, what's that kind of like? It's kind of wild. Um, Jillian's not doing volleyball this fall, and Joanna did all three sports, and Jill did also basketball and um, track. We've just been going, going, going. So things have slowed down a lot already. And now Jill's 16, just turned 16, drives herself. So I'm by myself a lot more than I used to be. Um, but it's exciting having, they've been spread out enough that they each kind of, they all want to do journalism too, which is super fun. But they kind of get their own, own time doing that. So now it's kind of Jill's time coming through and being a junior and senior. So I'm excited to see what that brings because they're all so different. So if you were speaking to a college student who's studying to be a teacher, what would you tell them about Columbus Catholic Schools and SCOTUS and why this is a great place? The kids say it a lot, that it's a SCOTUS family. And I do think that. And part of what makes it a family is that you can talk about your faith. Because when we can challenge one another to live a good and holy life, then we're going to be closer because we talk about those things. It's they're important and they're they're hard. We have to challenge one another. And that's what I love about the Catholic faith, too, is that some people don't like it for this reason. But I like it because it challenges me to be a good person. It challenges me regularly to do better. And I feel like because we do that, because John Peterson challenges you to do better all the time, you create family in that way because we're all doing something to be better together. Okay, so now as we wrap up, I have five rapid-fire questions for you. Okay. Okay. So, favorite teacher as a student at SCOTUS? John Peterson. What was your favorite school lunch as a student? That's hard. That's so hard. Our lunches were so good. I don't know. That's terrible. I really like the brownies. Okay. What was your go-to uniform attire? White shirt, khaki shorts. Favorite volleyball game moment? Favorite volleyball game moment. Oh, now we've kind of talked about some of them, so they come to my head faster. You know, funny, winning Cornhusker State games the summer before senior year. That we might actually be good. Okay. It was so hot and sweaty, I just can't even tell you. (laughs) But we won, and we were supposed to be bad, and so it was the first bit of confidence that we might be able to be good. And lastly, describe SCOTUS in one word. Expectations. Okay. Well, I think that'll wrap it up for this episode. Thank you, Mrs. Rusher, for taking the time, sharing your story with Shamrock Nation and all the CCS families and supporters. Thanks, Taylor. It was great. So if you're interested in hearing more Shamrock Green Room episodes, subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Make sure to follow us on our social media channels, Skoda Central Catholic on Facebook, X, and YouTube, and Columbus Catholic Schools on Instagram. Thanks again for joining us in the Shamrock Green Room.